morning, Money.net viewers. Let's talk FX. It is Thursday, November 2nd, and this is Steve Flanagan here with you to talk FX. You can hit me up on the Scout Chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, with any questions or follow-ups you might have. As always, it's my intention to educate the viewers with some of the insights and tools that I have learned over my 40 plus years of trading in the FX markets. It's my hope that we can all come away with a better understanding of what moves and drives the FX markets. Trading FX is exciting. Never a dull moment. Seven and a half trillion dollars trades each and every day. Where are we today? A new data point. We've arrived at this level that we've been talking about. The central banks are now aware of their poor inability to forecast accurately. The economic realities of today are a heightened geopolitical risk and lower growth is a distinct possibility. Let's take their words. We had the ECB pause on rate rises. And Lagarde said, the economy will remain weak for the rest of this year. Growth is expected to resume over the coming years plural. Let's jump into the Fed. The Fed paused on interest rates. And that is a, cons uh, a good thing, as the Fed has highlighted growth and that the restrictive stance is putting downward pressure on the economic activity and inflation. A realization that financial conditions have tightened significantly. The next question will be how long to keep policy restrictive. These are all comments from Jay Powell. The most important thing, though, is if we look around the world and we look at the playbook, the playbook from the central banks which we've been talking about for a good part of this year has been to break the back of inflation expectations. That goes back to Paul Volcker's playbook in how the central banks addressed inflation back in the late 70s, early 80s. Break the back of inflation expectations. Well. Let's look at what Jay Powell just said. The public believes that inflation will now come down, and that is critical in winning the battle. You know, this is what I have done for 43 years. You must watch the little nuances to the suggestions, to the statements that the central bankers, those holding the strings of the world's economy, because in there, you begin to see the change. And in seeing the change, I highlight to the viewers, watch the currency markets. Why? Because money moves first. You don't have to like that concept. You can be a little bit upset about the fact that money is able to move first. My point is simply, it is a great indication for you to utilize in your trading decisions. When I talk about the dollar max moving forward, we will highlight this to you about how the dollar max could have given us an early indication. But let's look at today. Oil down about 0.75% at $81.
And that's a lower oil given the Middle East conflict. Gold up about a half a percent. Equities up strong. U.S. 10-year yields two and a half percent lower. We're coming off of October, where the S&P closed for the third month in a low, row lower. The conditions are all there for what I have termed a new data point. When I highlight new data points, today, everything is automated trading. Models run, manage the balancing of these trillion dollar portfolios throughout the world. And so when a new data point enters into the market, that being the central bank pausing and specifically Jay Powell suddenly adding a tinge of concern about economic growth, the models must reweight themselves. We know the models throughout the world are very underweight equities, very exposed in short positions. It just stands to reason at looking at a simple chart. What else happened? Bank of Japan has allowed the 10-year JGP to rise above 1%. Now, they quickly blinked and came in the following day and to slow the rise of yields above 1% and throwing down the gauntlet at the JGB bears, the yen quickly weakened but the yen has suddenly strengthened again because of the U.S. on a pause. But this we've been highlighting is the tectonic plates beginning to move because the Bank of Japan is tiptoeing its way towards a more conventional interest rate policy, moving away from an ultra-loose policy. All these are the things under the market that can shatter the new data points. This was a big one that really did not get as much attention, but combined with the Fed, the ECB, and today, the Bank of England holding rates on steady, the combination, you must see the coordination in our central banks globally. They don't act, rarely, on their own. It's always a coordinated policy. Anyway, moving into China, the manufacturing PMI was 49.5 in October, and that's down from September's 50.6, above 50's expansionary, below 50, not a good sign. We know that Bank of England held rates steady today at five and a quarter, the second time in a row, However, the governor said, we want to maintain restrictive stance as long enough, and we will squeeze inflation out of the system. Meanwhile, the UK October housing prices were down 3.3% year on year. That's from September's down 5.3%. Remember, oh, so many of these mortgages must be refinanced in the six months to 12 months ahead. And if the housing price is cratering and you've now got to refinance these mortgages because the 30-year mortgage that we have in the U.S. is not conventional in the U.K., this poses an extreme downside risk to their economy. Their U.K. manufacturing PMI was 44.8 in October, down from 45.25 in September. Germany's GDP was minus 0.1% from last quarter. 0%. On the year, it was down minus 0.3 from, uh, from its minus 0.2. There is no growth in Germany, the core, the largest of the 20 members in the European, the Eurozone uh, bloc. Retail sales in Germany were down 0.8. On a good news, Eurozone core HICP, which is what the ECB watches, was 4.2%. The core, down from 4.5. That's good news. In fact, the Eurozone inflation, the headline number, was below 3%, coming in at 2.9, which is lower than the expected 3.1, and a significant decrease from the 4.3. 
all moving along with what we've been saying. Inflation is coming down. Why are the central banks using forward guidance of higher for longer? That's as bad, it will be known as bad, as inflation is transitory. Forward guidance went out when Alan Greenspan left or Bernanke left. Forward guidance today, it's it's not in their purview. They don't have the models that can adapt to the d- new data releases today, which take instantaneous transmission into the models, and the microeconomic adjustments happen instantaneously throughout the marketplace. Let me look at some of the currencies. In using the charting system on money.net, very good. The tools are excellent. A couple of little things we're working on to to, uh, improve. But I have right here the euro dollar, and we're looking at a daily chart. We've started to establish a little bit of a base, a nice little trend line here. The long-held trend line down was broken, but as we've been talking, the dollar has moved in a sideways fashion. In other words, relieving much of this oversold nature. A sideways fashion doesn't necessarily mean it's turning higher. What it means is that we will relieve the oversold condition, we will trade sideways, look for opportunities to sell, As you can see from the numbers that we've talked in today's economic uh, data releases, Europe is not looking well. Well, And hence, the central bank realization that, oh my goodness, we may have gone too far too fast because worse than inflation is an economic downturn. Because that affects the people, the consumers. And with the geopolitical risk in the world, That's not something the central banks are looking. My forecast is for a continued sideways move because the Fed pausing was a new element and therefore some of the froth in the dollar buying will take off. In which case, I look for the dollar to begin to trade off. When I show you the US dollar index, you'll get a better idea. But the European situation is getting worse and I am looking for a break back lower in the euro to test parity. If I jump into the dollar yen, you can see a very long held dollar bull trend, which we're not even close to testing. And that's back to 2021. This is a weekly chart because I wanna give a big picture. Right in here at our last highs of 151.95, the Bank of Japan intervened and knocked the yen down about 20 big figures. Here we are with the Bank of Japan threatening again, and our high has been 151.70. Now, you don't want to fail here if you're a dollar yen bull, because you fail at the previous high, that is a very bearish signal. And trust me, in an overbought condition like we are in, and this is a weekly The Bank of Japan studies these things very carefully from experience. I can tell you they look to use technicals in their favor. If they come in and say, boo, dollar yen will drop. We're presently at 150.30. I am looking for a test in around 145, 146 before a basing pattern as we begin to relieve some of this overbought nature. So that's using the money.net. What I do, I want to jump back into my charting and talk about the dollar index here. You can see we've broken again that long held since July uptrend in the dollar. We've now moved into the sideways pattern using location trading points, which is so important. Why? Because location trading allows us to look at where we've been. And understanding where we've been, we can have a better idea of where we're going. We can utilize those closing levels as 
definitive risk management levels in which to balance our trading. In other words, we can have very tight stop losses and we can allow our profits to run. And there is no better formulation that I have found in 43 years than using location trading. Last week's close was 106.54. We are presently at 106.13. October's close, 106.67. So we are below two critical levels. Therefore, if we rally, I want to sell. However, the big level I want to point out is 106.19. Why do I talk about quarter three close? Because we look to catch, unless you're a day trader, an in and out trader, stick and jab, jabba, that's fine. Then use this perhaps on hourly basis. But if you're looking for the bigger picture, which is how I always suggest using currencies to give you a bigger picture view, then 106.19 was quarter three close. If we begin to stay below that level, as we have moved through October, we have November and December to decide quarter four. Will we close lower? Will we begin to trend from that level? Use that as a definitive point because it's right here, 106.13. You could say I'm short dollar index based on the new Fed data point might be a good idea. And you could have a stop loss at 106.25. Meanwhile, let your downside run. So that's the way we look to use location trading points. Looking at sterling, this has been a lively one today because when the Bank of England paused and they did talk about higher for longer, blah, 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 the market immediately responded and said, well, sterling rates, they are high. I mean, Bank of England right now is at five and a quarter. So if you are looking in major currency pairs, the U.S. is five and a half. Bank of England's five and a quarter. The ECB is four and a half. Sterling is a good high interest rate currency to hold. It has been in a sideways pattern. We have broken above this trade trend line. And it looks as though we probably will head in a higher fashion. I would look for 123.40 to cap any top move. However, we are at 121.82. So we're above last week's close. We're above October's close. But quarter three close yet again. 122.02. Here we are at 121.81. How do you play that? You use the quarter three close. If we break above, say, a 122.10 or 12, add a little bit of discretion to the points then I want to get long. But up against that level, maybe I want to get short. Sterling is kind of in a stuck in between here. You could be short here, but you want to buy against last week's close of 121.22. So it's 60 points to the downside, maybe a 40 point move to the upside. So cable is something you want to be watching and trading and aware of your levels. Dollar CAD is a very good one. Set a new trading pattern. I've been holding these long term back till uh, October of 22. Highs, lower high, lower high. But now we've broken the pattern. We've now put in a new high, still below um, the, uh, the high in October of 22. But nevertheless, the pattern is broken. Therefore, we are in an overbought condition. I'd be looking to buy dollar CAD. Remember, Bank of Canada has talked about perhaps a recession over the next two to three quarters. So dollar CAD, by just looking into the North American zone, I want to be long dollar, short the CAD, but not at these levels. I'd look to be buying in a low, lower level around the 136.50. Now, if the dollar does go in to a lower correction, Let's utilize 135.73 was the quarter three close as an ultimate level to be long. Right now, we're below last week's close and October's close, which is arguing for a correction. But here's the one I want to spend a moment on, Dolomex. Two weeks ago, we began to talk about the top. We began to talk about the oversold condition being relieved. 
And we are argued that Dalam X is perhaps beginning to show us at 11 and a quarter percent, Dalam X is where the hot money in the world resides. Hot money. Hot money is the money that moves in a heartbeat. It moves instantaneously. And we began to say that if the Dalam X was beginning to top, it could be showing us early signs that the market, the hot money, is viewing a central bank pause coming. Now, this was before all the central banks' meetings. Because if the hot money was moving back after getting out after such a year-and-a-half-long move, then this would be a good situation for the broader macro world that they're parking their money back into a high interest rate currency, seeing that the stress levels in the world are easing. And so, fast forward two weeks, all the major central banks have now talked about economic growth weakening and a pause. This is the type of early view that a, set, that a foreign exchange currency watch can give you and help you in your trading and keeping your stop losses and allowing your profits to run, but really help you identify some of the larger macro moves that are at play. Look, we can't all be in hot money. We don't all have hot money to be moving around. But yes, the reality of the world is many do. So currencies give us the insights and acts as a tool for us to be able to see that. Well, I hope that you found that that was insightful. In a world where money moves first, central bank messaging and their clarity is gone. In fact, central bank messaging, they try forward guidance, but their forward guidance is horrible. Higher for longer is as bad as inflation is transitory. So if you just look, this morning I spent time listening to the what I call the bobbleheads on all the financial news networks because they kind of regurgitate a lot of the news of the day. I know because at one point in my career, I was there too. Now, I, I don't say this in a negative fashion. But suddenly you'll talk, you'll see everybody talking, if you just listen, about how rates could go higher, U.S. economic growth is stronger, and how rates may have to go higher, because, because why? Why not allow the rates that have been moved? You know, you need a historical perspective. We've never raised rates this far, this fast. And we saw in March that we broke things. There were several banks that went out of business. What is next to break? Do we want to get to that point? Uh, no, not at all. Not in a world of heightened geopolitical risk. Therefore, central banks are dropping the mic and they are stepping off the stage. The next move in rates will be lower, probably led by Europe and the UK. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. Know what your trading style is. If you're a short-term jobba, if you're a medium or long-term, utilize location trading points as a way of minimizing your risk. That's a wrap. Let's keep the currency markets hot. I'll see you next Tuesday morning at the same time. Flanagan out.